Oh, Jesus. Now, may I be what? Ah, Jesus. See the way you love me. See the way you come for me. You carry my matter for your head, oh. He that may be not so like a little baby. You watch over me, oh. You not know that carry me the prayer. Oh. See the man of be not so. See the way you love me. I am who surround upon where we send a me. Who surround upon we send a me. I am catching a messiah and I would come, sir. I know, Papa. Be Robin, I saw more. He never been so. He has done it for me. So bechuku, when you open your eyes, what is it? So bechuku, so bechuku, he has done it for me. Even before I prayed, Jehovah DC answered me. So bechuku, oya kenu wa. So bechuku, so bechuku, yasta. See the way he lifted you. So bechuku, he. Oh oh oh. So bechuku, he has done it for me. When I was worried, I could not sleep. He was walking behind. Oh. Worried, I could not sleep. He was walking behind the sino. So bad, Shuku. He has done it for me. Me pacho me no baba ya di ebi wati. Emble wo me emble pa sa emble boni. Osimbe <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. It's good to see you all. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. 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 From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Father, we just want to thank you for this short time where we just share your word. We pray that the entrance of your word will spring forth light in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. All right. Our brother Eric is my good friend. Amen. So when he said he wanted to have uh, the gathering here, I was like, why not? Amen. And it's good to have you in Shana City Church. Amen. Amen. You can see on the keyboard. Amen. So I'm just going to teach you quickly on, um, on something I, I, I tend just rebuilding the gates. Hallelujah. Somebody say, rebuilding the gates. Amen. Oh, pardon me. It looks like my son wants to preach with me. Re rebuilding the gates. Amen. All right. Rebuilding the gates. You want to sit here for daddy? Okay. 
Let's put our hands together for him. Amen. All right. All right, so iron sharpened iron. Basically, we are here to, to sharpen you and to build you up for, for kingdom purposes. And when, when the gates of, of the kingdom are broken, it really means that there are some things in the kingdom that are not functioning. Hallelujah. Amen. What prevents the enemy from entering a space is actually a gate. Hallelujah. What prevents the enemy from coming to your house is actually a gate. So every, every house or every property or every space is guarded by a gate. Hallelujah. And once the gates are destroyed or once the gates don't function, it means that the enemy has access. Hallelujah. So once the gates in the pastoral meeting, uh, pastoral ministry is not functioning, it means the enemy can attack. Once the gates in the praise and worship ministry is not functioning, it means the enemy can attack. Once the gates in your home is not functioning, it means the enemy can what? Attack. Hallelujah. So gates are ways that God prevents the enemy from coming into our space, coming into our ministries, coming into our homes to attack the things that God has purposed for us as a ministry hallelujah amen so what you think about a gate it's a means of protection hallelujah when you think about a gate it's a closure that prevents an entry hallelujah so see, when the gates of your lives are not guarded what you do is you open up for the enemy to come in and to destroy hallelujah and that is what is happening in a lot of our churches and a lot of our Christian life because a lot of us have opened up for the enemy to come in and the enemy is destroying a lot of things hallelujah so you have pastors who are sleeping around with daughters hallelujah you have people who are in the praise and worship ministry who are sleeping around with the sisters in the choir you have people who take the offerings of the church and they are misappropriating it because the gates are not guarded hallelujah Hallelujah. So if we are going to sharpen ourselves as a ministry, there are some ethics, there are things, there are principles, they are, they are giving you exposure. Hallelujah. You have people who tell you, if you don't give me X amount of money, I'm not going to mount the stage and I'm not going to sing. Hallelujah. You have preachers who tell you, if you don't give me this amount of money, I'm not going to stand in your pulpit and preach because the gates are wide open and the enemy has crept into the church. Hallelujah. I don't know what sermon you came for, but I just, I'm an evangelist, so I give the hard truth. Hallelujah. So the Bible said there was a man who was called Nehemiah. Hallelujah. Who went to rebuild the walls of what? Jerusalem. Because at the time he went to Jerusalem, he saw that the gates were wide open and Jerusalem was vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. That is why we are praying now and we are not seeing no results. That is why people are screaming, we'll go for 21 days of prophetic service, but there's no change in your life. That is why there are cripples who are walking into our churches and they walk out with no healing because the gates are wide open and the enemy has crept in and the, the purity, the holiness, the power of God is out of the church. Hallelujah. So a lot of you go to programs because you want to see man and not Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why are you here? Are you coming to see all this big man of God preach? Or your focus is that God is going to use this big man of God to impact something in your life. Hallelujah. While my sister was singing, I was wondering, are you connecting with God? Are you excited about her voice? Hallelujah. Because for her, she's trying to connect you to God, but your concern is somewhere else. Hallelujah. So until we realize that these gates need to be closed and we put value systems in our kingdom, we'll still be at the same place. We'll be praying 24 hours and nothing is happening. We'll be screaming and shouting and nothing is happening. Hallelujah. Because the gates are not what? Closed. Hallelujah. The Bible says in, in Nehemiah, I'm going to read two verses, uh, 17. The Bible says, then I said to them, yes, uh, you see uh, the distress that we are in now. This Je Jeremiah tells them, you see now the distress we are in now. Because at that moment, something was happening. Things were not functioning right. You see the distress we are in now. We have not built, uh, let me say, praise and worship ministers who are burdened with, with the, 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 the worship of Jesus Christ. But they are more burdened with how much money the pastor is going to give me after the service is done. Hallelujah. We are more burdened, we are more burdened with pastors who are more concerned about how much money I'm going to raise after the service and what Pastor Eric is going to give me when I'm done. Other than when we are done, Pastor Eric, did somebody give their life to Christ? Hallelujah. We are more concerned about the numbers coming to church, but we are not concerned about the value of the soul. Hallelujah. You see, God is not interested about the numbers that are coming to heaven. He's interested about the quality of souls that are coming to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is no use going to church 
I mean, it would be funny. You go to church your whole life and you stand before God and he tells you, depart from me. You work off iniquity. I know you not. I don't know you. Who are you? Oh God, was I not John Senator, the one who traveled the world and preached the gospel? He said, no, you did not preach. You preached in my name, but my name was not a factor in your life. There is one thing to preach Jesus Christ and there's another thing to live Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So it's not enough just preaching Jesus. You have to reach a place where you are living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm tired of people preaching Jesus and not knowing Jesus. Hallelujah. Where you go to, uh, I went to a brother, so funny. A pastor was angry, angry in a car and would not come out to preach because of the way he was, it was the protocol treated him. He said, no, your protocol did not treat him right, so I'm not coming out to preach. And you are asking yourself, the Bible says Jesus was always burdened with the souls. So every time she picks the microphone and she stands there, her burden is not for, for skill or anything. She's burdened because at that moment she has to connect somebody to the heavens. Hallelujah. And the, right, the reason why sometimes she'll stop and tell you you are not getting it is because where she's trying to take you, your mind is not there. Because you are being flesh when you're supposed to be in a spirit. Hallelujah. So we have a lot of people who are going to programs because of light. You are going to programs because of the name who is coming, but you are not concerned about the name you are going to worship. Hallelujah. Is it Jesus you came here for? Because I know he is an advocate of Jesus Christ. If not Jesus Christ you come here for, then you missed it. Hallelujah. The Bible said the guy saw that there was distress. And there's distress in our, in our, in our ministries now. Hallelujah. If you don't hold a certain title, you cannot be a, 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 a preacher. Hallelujah. So now by force, some people have to call themselves prophets when they are not prophets. Hallelujah. You were a teacher, but because the numbers are not growing, you now change your name from pastor to prophet. Hallelujah. God said you hold the teaching services on Friday, but you change the teaching service to prophetic, prophetic encounter. But you were called to be a teacher and not a prophet. Hallelujah. So a lot of you are saying, that's here the Lord when God has not said anything. Because for every time you said, that's here the Lord, that was not the voice of God. You were telling the world that God is a liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't force yourself to call. You see, sometimes to put people in bondage, you call the person, they don't have anything to say. Then they say, I see that there is fire around you. And I see that there was a, there was a horn in your family. The person came to the church with her heart to worship God, but goes home with burdens. Hey, there is a horn. Hey, there is a, there is a fire chasing me. Hallelujah. It has become so bad that now when Christians go to uh, uh, the office, you are even thinking the church you are going to sit on has a demon. So how are you living your Christianity? Your whole mind is, the person who is sitting by you right now is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a suspect. Hallelujah. So immediately he comes to sit on his chair, Rabba Kaskapata, oh shut up, every demon, no, oh, no, hallelujah. So when you're even shaking somebody in your office, after shaking, you pull anointing oil, by, by thunder, by fire, any, any, any transfer of spirit, hallelujah. You are not enjoying your Christian work because your whole mind is devil. The Bible said, he whom the son sets free is free indeed. So when you have Christ, you've accepted the Lord as your savior, the enemy has no power over you unless you allow him. That is what we need to preach for people. Hallelujah. You should be able to be in the house yourself and pray. You should not depend on him to pray. Hallelujah. I, you see, the, reason, the hardest I can tell a church is grown when I go to your prayer meetings. If your prayer meetings are full on Friday, that means that is a growing church. That is people who are hungry to talk to God. Hallelujah. If I come to your Wednesday service and your church is full, that is people who are hungry for the word of God. Hallelujah. But when I come on Wednesday and Wednesday three, Friday three, prophetic encounter, booyah, then there's an error. Hallelujah. There is an error. Because the people are now itchy. They want to hear, but they don't want to know him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Bible says the gates are in distress. Meaning there is a problem. Hallelujah. The 18, the Bible says, and I told them uh, of the hand of my God, which he had been which had given what which had been good upon me, and also the king's word which he had spoken to me. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, The hand of the Lord, which was what? Good unto me. Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. I wrote some notes here. Let me just go to my notes for uh, when you go to Luke 18, 29 to 30, the Bible says, Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brother or sister or parents for the sake of the kingdom what will fail to receive what many times as much as this age hallelujah 
and in the age of, the, what, of, of, of eternal life to come. Hallelujah. You see, what you are building here is not church. This body, I always tell people, this body one day to go six feet. Hallelujah. This thing you spend so much money to glorify. You go to pedicure, you put it down. They are doing all the filing and they are doing all the plugins. Hallelujah. One day it's going to go six feet. You know who will throw you like a chicken from the fridge? A much man. You go to like a shoo, pa. Hallelujah. So in this life, there's really nothing to boast about. Hallelujah. If there is anything to boast about, boast about the Christ in you and the hope of all glory. Hallelujah. If there is anything to be prideful about, it's because Christ lives on the inside of you and you are a carrier of the presence. Amen. Now the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but what will not pass? My word. So it means that for you not to exit this life, you need to carry more of God's word. Because more of God's word you have inside of you means you are subject to eternal life. You don't expire. You transition. Hallelujah. So when I step out of this flesh, what I'm going into is, is a different realm. Hallelujah. Because Christians don't die, we transition. Hallelujah. It's so funny that we all want to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. It's not my time. Hallelujah. And I'm a boy. You want to live to 99.9. .9. Do you want to go to heaven? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you following? So when you go to Psalm 102, uh, 3, 13 to 14, Psalm 102, the Bible says you will arise and have compassion on Zion. Hallelujah. For it is time to show favor on her. It says what the set time or the appointed time was what has come. Hallelujah. The Bible says now is the time where the true worshippers of the Father will evolve and worship him in spirit and what? In all truths. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you read uh, uh, Nehemiah, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to do 2, uh, uh, 11 to 20. The Bible says that this guy returned to rebuild. Let me just paraphrase the story you all know. He returned to rebuild the walls of what? Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So iron sharpened iron means we are all coming here to equip ourselves to rebuild the kingdom of God. Right? To rebuild our homes, to rebuild our churches, to rebuild our ministries because the gates have been left open and the enemy has crept in while men were slept. Hallelujah. Amen. You become so lazy now you have to give some uh, pastor money to fast for you. Uh -huh. You become so lazy. Hallelujah. That we depend on. There are some people there. Eh? They are anointing oils in their room. They have uh, 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 churches. So this anointing oil, I went to uh, Reverend Bob Kingsley Church. And then this was anointing for prosperity. Then they label it and put it there. So they have about 20 bottles of oil with different, different labels. And they believe that that one carries power. So when it's financial, they go for this particular oil and they pour it on their hair. Hallelujah. We become like, uh, how do you call it, fetish. We think that when we throw some money on the altar, that means tomorrow by, by thunder, by fire, there has to be a pressure over shaking together. So somebody has to give you money. Hallelujah. So the reason why you are doing what you are doing is because you know there's going to be a return. Hallelujah. But if you are giving to God because you want a return, then the giving was not right. Hallelujah. Every giving is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Right now that I'm here, I'm sacrificed because I have to spend some time with my children, but I still have to sacrifice and pull them here. Because I need to be here to, to pay the price of what? The cross. Hallelujah. Which means to leave my boys and be here. Hallelujah. So for, for this kingdom, I'm sure she probably has uh, numerous programs, right? Amen. But she probably has to pick yours over the other. Maybe the other ones were paying more than you were paying. If there was payment anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. But she has to sacrifice. Amen. 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 And I remember you get my point? So, so there, there are lots of sacrifices that we ought to do for kingdom. Number one, uh, from Nehemiah, the Bible says he was, he was to rebuild the walls around the city of Jerusalem after he had been laid wound for some time. And that is what is happening now. They're, 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 they're timing me. What my times are just ignoring me. We've left it open for some time. So right now there's disaster in the church. Hallelujah. Number one. Number two, the Jews living in Jerusalem at that time were content with what was broken. Hallelujah. So now that's the Christians we have now. We are okay. We are okay with, we can't speak out. You see, the Bible says lack of knowledge, my people would perish. And it's out of knowledge that you know this pastor is deceiving me. But because we are content with what they are doing, and because we have, we have lack of God's knowledge, we allow them to do what they do to us. Amen. Amen. It is not every hand that needs to lay, that, that needs to be laid on you. Hallelujah. 
Some of you have sent your head and the things you've received at that service is what is torturing your life. Because the pastor was not pure. He was not holy. Hallelujah. He was not set apart. He did not have the spirit of God. He was operating by another spirit. But because you had crowd, 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 you went. And he said, bring your head. You also took your head. He laid hands on it and there was a transfer. Hallelujah. So instead of you being blessed in the service, you went carrying another spirit. A spirit of lust. Hallelujah. A spirit of anger. A spirit of hatred. So all of a sudden, after you went for that revival, your life, which was supposed to be changed for the better, was changed for the worse. Because instead of going with the spirit of God, you went with the spirit of lust. Hallelujah. So if she used to sleep with three men, the, the thing has multiplied by three. So three, three what? Nine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because now the, the demon has, has, has stirred the thing up proper. Hallelujah. The Bible says when the demon departs and he comes back, he brings how many more? Seven more. And when the seven go and they come back, they bring how many more? Seven multiplied by seven. How many? Forty-nine. And when the 49 go and they come, the Bible says when Jesus met the guy at the, at, the, at, the, at the sea, the Bible says the demons that were cast out of him were about what? Thousands. Hallelujah. So one person can carry thousands of demons. Anger, pride, what? Uh, uh, adultery. You know, so, so one person. So one deliverance service is not okay for one person. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm not too Now, in 99, not social. Then they come again, we cast it out. Then the other two has gone. Amen. So if Jesus is saying one person was carrying about thousands of demons, how many demons are in you right now? <laughs> how many have left and how many are operating? Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Because when you are dependent on everything we preach from the Bible, you will not grow. There is a time where you have to separate yourself and study the scripture yourself. I do not power you depending on the man of God. I power you building up your most holy faith. Hallelujah. Because when the times of tribulation comes, it is you who are able to stand in your room and to pray. And my work is less. If all my church members are grounded in the word and in prayer, I don't have headache with phone calls. Because when they call me, they give me testimonies. Reverend, when this happened in the evening, I lifted my hand and I said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. And it happened and I'm happy. Hallelujah. It is not galamsia every time let us meet in a church and you're holding oil and you become a what's called mechanic. Every time doing all your work, j j receive it. The person comes again. Ah, you last week didn't we cast out the demon? So far, but you move. When you are me a trick. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we are doing the same work again. Every time, every time in your church, the same girl who falls down. Every time she's coming. Oh, like, ah, now you last week didn't you fall? To this week you are falling again. Hallelujah. Because the thing is not going. Because the person is not growing themselves. Hallelujah. They are dependent on Sunday work. No, but you have to grow them to depend on themselves. They should be able to pray. Hallelujah. Imagine your whole church is on fire and you, the pastor, you are going through something and you have about 100 members praying for you. Kai, Hallelujah. It can't happen. You shift things. Every time you gather, it's bonfire because fire, fire, fire. When you gather together, it's crazy fire. Hallelujah. That is the level you have to get to. So stop preaching for members to depend on you because you are not God. Hallelujah. Let them look to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of their faith. That is the person who is, who is the, the, the reason for all this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three. But Nehemiah saw a vision other than all, what all the people were seeing. They were seeing the walls were broken. They were okay. But he knew that the walls needed to be what? Closed. Hallelujah. That means purity has to come back to our churches. That means a parista cannot just climb a stage and show breast on stage. Hallelujah. Eh? You are worshiping, we bow down, everything is showing. So when you said, we bow down, and you did this, the young man started, rakas kapata. The prayer warrior was jumping, not because he saw God, he saw something else. It's a my God. Shataya. Hey! It was not tongues, it is last. Hallelujah. Amen. And the pastor who is supposed to preach the word of God, who is preparing in front, pastors they suffer. Hallelujah. Amen. The worst part is when they are doing choreography and they are wearing something annoying. And they are doing, ah, ah. And the pastor is right there, getting ready to get in a spirit and preach. And some girl is wearing leggings and shaking her, her thing in front of a pastor. Hallelujah. And people allow it because if we don't do it, people will not come to church. That's an error. If I don't do that one, they won't come to church. So you have to have people shake themselves. Amen. You say, oh sister, the way you have been dressing, you are too covered. Show something small. Show some flesh. <laughs> uh, 
Hallelujah. Oh, pastors tell people, I want dresses. So show them a cacre, and I'm confusing. It's a for sorry. They be our own Roman sister. Hallelujah. It's a marketing tool. Hallelujah. Marketing strategy. Hallelujah. So simple songs you sing and do this. Then the bride, oh my God, I swear to you, send me by the Bia. Hey, send me by every Sunday. Hey, a man of more first hand. So what is keeping the people in church is not the spirit of God, it is what? Last. The Bible says if it, it takes what? It's just looking to commit adultery. How many adultery cases do we have every Sunday in church? What the, so what is, is said to be the Holy Spirit is not the Holy Spirit. It is a mixture of lust. Hallelujah. Because the girl who is singing there and the way she's dressed and the men and what they are perceiving is not Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost cannot dwell there. He was gone a long time ago. Because half the men are thinking about sleeping with that girl on the stage. And you say it's the Holy Spirit. You say it's the presence of God. Your pastor told you dress well, you got angry. How? I am the, I'm the singer. Can you tell me what to wear to church? You got angry, you left. The pastor told you when you are, you are praying, when you are praying, don't show, don't show, uh, uh, oh, don't show biceps. Oh, pastor, this modern day, don't you watch this American preachers? The way they show themselves, you know, praise God, hallelujah. You know, hallelujah. So, you know, we, are, we are copying things that are fleshy and not spiritual. We want to dress and look like uh, uh, some bishop. Hallelujah. We, we want to wear long, long uh, uh, chains. I remember I went to America, I went to preach, and I introduced the bishop as, oh, we welcome apostle. The bishop looked at me and said, no, John, I'm not an apostle, I'm a bishop. He said it right there, he said, no, 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 don't make a mistake, I'm not an apostle, I'm a bishop. The title was more important than anything. Hallelujah. So some of you get angry. Amen. They did not acknowledge me. Amen. Amen. You when you come to my church here on Sunday, you don't even know who is a pastor. Because me, I'm sitting there somewhere. We don't have anything we call pastor sitting in the front room. Because sometimes the pastor is preaching sitting in the corner there somewhere. Amen. Because we don't want it to, the focus to be on man, but the focus to be on Christ. We don't want you to revere us more than, than, than Christ. It's an error to take his glory. Hey, it would be a disaster for me to stand in the place of Christ. Who am I? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So every time we take the microphone, we should do it with fear and trembling. Because we'll be judged the most. For everybody who has a microphone in front of the church, know that your judgment is higher. So that means whatever you are speaking from the microphone, be careful. If God has not said it, don't say it. If God has not told me to raise funds, I want to raise funds. Hallelujah. A pastor, I preached for a pastor one time. I said, well, man, I don't raise fans. I said, I don't raise fans. I said, I don't fans. I said, I don't raise fans. I said, I don't raise fans. I said, I don't raise fans. I said, I Hallelujah. I don't raise Because if the purpose for raising fans is to pay me after my word, I don't, I don't need your money. If that is what you, you are taking the money for, forget it. Hallelujah. I'm not hungry. <laughs> I'll go back to where I came from. Hallelujah. Some of you do revivals just for the money and not for the revival. A revival na hena ba ye. Ah ye nya ye nya 20 million. Ah the revival na nya successful. The success of your revival is dependent on how much money you have and not how much souls you want. That's an error. What a disaster. Hallelujah. Oh revival na nya powerful. Last year nya 50 million. This year then nya 12,000. Ah they are terrible form. It's not powerful. Then you call all the church leaders, me a pastor more, on vampire. But that was not what God was interested in. God was more interested in the souls. God was more interested in, the, in that young man who came out there and said, I give my life to Christ. The Bible says when one person is born unto Christ, the whole of heaven goes into chaos. The Bible says the choir gets crazy, the, the singers get mad. They rejoice over one person. It's not how well we sing. It's not how well I preach. It's not how nice the church looks like. Hallelujah. That does not move heaven. The Bible says the only thing that moves heaven is when one says, I've surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. So when she's singing, her purpose is not to excite you. Her purpose is to get that one person who can lift up her hands and say, I have accepted Christ because of her ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. If one soul represents a brick in heaven to build your mansion in heaven, how many, how many, look around, plot round tall heaven. If this person represents one brick to build a mansion in heaven, and you've not won one soul, you can say you've discipled. Can you boast of the fact that I have won one soul? I have discipled the person. 
I have always called this person. I've made sure the person is in church. The person is growing in the Lord. If as a believer right now, you can't boast that you've really nurtured one person in Christ and the person is still in Christ, then that's an error. Then forget about all we are doing. What is, what is this? Is? Hallelujah. Amen. Because your neighbor, when you leave here, you go home. Once you get to your compound, your atmosphere will change. Because you and your neighbor, you are fighting. Hallelujah. They say you are spiritual, but you don't, you don't respect everybody in the compound. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a powerful young preacher, but you are stuck with pornography. Because that one, nobody sees it. But when you come out, <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, boy. <laughs> you are praising another Lord. It's called pornography. Hallelujah. Amen. Married, but you are screwing a thousand and one women in the name of counseling. Uh, but your secretary, catch up and say, may your last counsel the way no disturbance. Why no disturbance? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why no disturbance? Amen. Matthew 16, 18, and I will tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And it says, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. These are the people that God is looking for in iron sharpened iron. People who are ready to rebuild the walls of the church. He says, upon you, Peter, will I build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Hallelujah. Upon you will I build your church, my kingdom, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I'm not talking to somebody. Upon you will I build the, 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 what, the gates of the church and the gates of hell will not prevail. I, I just declare over somebody today who is, is called to this, that God will begin to use you as a tool to, to cause a change in the church. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's be on our feet. We just want to pray one prayer. Amen. Because there's a lot, there are a lot of speakers. Amen. There are a lot of speakers. Can you lift your hands? Lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, equip me for use. Say, equip me for use. Let me tell you something. When you come here, I don't have time to stir people up to pray. I don't have time to say, clap your hands and child. No, no, no. Because if you can't know, you don't know yourself to clap your hands and pray. I can't teach you to pray. Hallelujah. Because I'm supposing we are all powerful men of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want us to pray with all fervency. Because the, the nation Ghana depends on the voices. Hallelujah. He's a voice. He's a voice. She's a voice. You are a voice. She is a voice. You are a voice. Hallelujah. But if the enemy keeps these voices shut, daddy, we cannot function. Hallelujah. Amen. So in your small way, you are doing ministry. In your house, you are doing ministry. In your office, you are doing ministry. In your, in your workplace, you are doing ministry. God is using you in every corner. And we want to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, use me to rebuild the walls of the church in the mighty name of Jesus. Is somebody ready to pray? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand as gatekeepers. Are you ready? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand as gatekeepers in the name of Jesus and declare that will be used for the kingdom's sake in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, because I'm alive, the gates of the church will be rebuilt. I will fulfill purpose. I will fulfill my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Come on. Come on, open up your mouth. Leba ba shete de 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 shiba ta. Lebre de si fre na 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 lebre si fa ya ta. Lebre na si fri ya te. Leba ba ha. Yeta ta na 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 de si fra ta ta. Somebody open up your mouth. The gates of the church will have to be rebuilt. In the mighty name of Jesus, every gate that is shut, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm going to call the Holy Ghost. Come on, can I hear somebody open up your mouth? Remania Kapa, Zetia Ka, Ramada Ate, Remia Kapa, in Tadia Ba, Sete Terea Day, Remia Kapa, Zetia Ta. Somebody open up your mouth, pray, come on.
Jesus, we stand as men of God and declare today every gate of darkness that has been opened towards the church by authority and in the name of Jesus, we shout in the mighty name of Jesus, say the plans of the enemy will not prevail against the church. Say the plans of the enemy will not prevail against the church. Say the plans of the enemy will not prevail against the church. The plans of the enemy will not prevail against the church. Lord, the plans of the enemy will not prevail against the church. So as we lift our voices, as we slap our hands, we shut the agenda of the enemy. Come on, pray this last one. Come on. We shut the gates of hell. We shut up the attack of the enemy. Concerning your church right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We shut, we shut, we shut, we shut, we shut, we shut, we we shut, 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 we shut the gates in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody keep praying. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Ma reka kaya ba ba ba. Reka tu saya ba ba ba. Jabala ba ba ba. Reka tu skaya ba ba ba. Re mahanda ya ba. Reka tu skaya ba 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 ba. Re ba ya ba ba ba. Reka tu saya ba 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 ba. Ma reka kaya ba ba ba. Reka tu saya ba ba ba. In the name of Jesus. We are praying this prayer before I introduce the man of God, Apostle Abraham Samuel. We saw in the book of Isaiah 6 when God gave Isaiah his mission. And also we saw in the book of Ezekiel when God was sorting for a man. It means God need a man. You know, there's a shortage of intercessors. And God was like, he sought for a man, but there was no one who would stand in the gap. We are praying that God, here am I. Do you want to do something new? Do you need some new information? Do you need some change in government? Do you need some change in the economy? Do you need some change in the church? Lord, use me for that change. 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 Open your mouth and begin to pray. That Lord, here am I. I'm not going the same. Use me, oh God, to bring that change. Use me, oh God, to bring that transformation. Use me, oh God, to bring that change. Uh. Lord, here we come. Uh. Here we come, oh God. Uh. Use us for your glory. 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 Marakataya Baba. Randuska ya mahanda ya ba, renda suka taya ma, randuska ya mama ma, renda ya kata ya ba ba ba, rakata ya mama ma, reka tosa mahanda ya ba, reka taya ba 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 ba. Use me, oh God, use me, oh God, use me, oh God. Ma reka taya mama mama ma, reka tosa ma ya ba, reka taya ba 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 ba, ma reka dosa handa ya ba, reka dosa ya mahanda ya. Oh Lord, use us for your glory. Use us for your glory, oh God. Use us for your glory, oh God. Use us for your glory, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Um, please, you can have your seat. Thank you so much, um, Evangelist John Cena, for the powerful word of God you've given unto us. Please, can you give it up to Evangelist John Cena? So at this moment, um, we'll be having our second welcome address after Apostle comes. At this moment, I want to invite Apostle Abraham Samoa to take us for the second session.
You know, he's an amazing man of God. Do it better, do it better for him. Do it better for him. Thank you for coming, Apostle. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise. We give God glory for today and for such a powerful session. God bless you, Evangelist. Amen. For that, for that powerful word. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Father, we thank you one more time. We give you praise one more time. We honor you one more time. We adore you one more time. We are grateful that, Lord, you have made it possible for us to be here. And we thank you for what you have started. We pray that we will never live here the same. Our ministries, our lives will be transformed to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to salute all the great men and women of God in the house. Amen. And I want to thank God so much for the life of Pastor Eric Nate, Amen. The leader of this group network. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. A man I've grown to love. His humility is just amazing. Amen. And anytime I have the opportunity to connect with him, I continue to see that this man keeps growing in humility. And I want to say, man of God, God bless you so much. And it's a blessing knowing you. Amen. Well, we thank God for this morning. I, don't want, I want to share a few words with us. Amen. I want to share with us on what I've captioned, my life, an altar for God. Somebody say, my life, an altar for God. I'll turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, a very popular scripture. It said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to understand that the foundation of our work with God is the relationship that we have with him. The better your relationship with God, the stronger the foundation that you have with him. And one of the things that can enhance your relationship is your level of spiritual understanding. When you increase in spiritual understanding, the brighter your work with God becomes. So anytime you see a man that is ascending into heights in God, it simply means that that man has tapped into a certain level of understanding. Hallelujah. Now, it is important that we understand that as a people of God, as servants of God, one of the things that we must come to terms with is the operations of God. It is one thing to know God is another to know his operation. Because something can be operating or let me say that there can be a manifestation of an operation and that necessarily may not be God. Am I talking to somebody here? Because when Moses went to Egypt and he cast down his rod and the rod became a serpent, the magicians also cast their rod and it became a serpent. But the operation was not from God, though the result looked like it was from God. So it is important that we come to terms with the operations of God. I pray that at the end of the day, we will know when God is operating and when God is not operating. I pray that at the end of, every, at the end of this meeting, uh, wherever we find ourselves, we'll be able to discern that this is God and this is not God. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things when it comes to the operations of God, I have seen through scripture, is altars. Hallelujah. In, in, in the operations of God, I've seen that an altar plays an integral part. Now, the word altar in the Hebrew is mizabek. Amen. From the root word, uh, from the, I beg your pardon, the, 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 the word the altar from the Hebrew is mizabek and from the root word zabek, which means a place of slaughter. A place of slaughter. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And then in the Greek, it means a place of sacrifice. A place of sacrifice. Now, what is an altar? I know most of us are conversant with this. Amen. But I'm coming to a place. An altar, number one, an altar is a divine channel which creates an atmosphere for interaction between humanity and divinity. So an altar creates an atmosphere. It is a channel that creates an atmosphere for interaction between divinity and humanity. So any time you see interaction and you and between divinity and humanity, then it means that an altar has been activated. Number two, an altar is a platform for sacrifices, prayer, and worship, which creates a legal ground for the interference of the supernatural. It is a platform for sacrifices, prayer, and worship, which creates a legal ground for the interference of the supernatural. Number three, an altar is a high place which guarantees negotiations between divinity and humanity. It is a high place which guarantees negotiation between divinity and humanity. Now, through our scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, I have come to discover that most of the patriarchs of the faith that we look up onto, at one point in time, they built altars unto God. Hallelujah. Now, for instance, Noah built an altar because of time, we are not going to read all the scriptures. Uh, Genesis chapter 8 verse 20, we see Noah building an altar unto God. And then we see that Abraham also built an altar. In fact, theologian says that Abraham built four altars. And we see this in Genesis chapter 12 verse 6 to 7. And then we see Genesis 12 verse 8. And then we see Genesis 13 verse 14 to 18. And then we see Genesis 22 verse 9. And then Isaac also built an altar. Hallelujah. In Genesis 26 verse 25, we see Isaac building an altar. Then we see Jacob also built two altars. In Genesis 35 verse 7 and Genesis 33 verse 19 down to 20, we see Jacob the patriarch building altars. Hallelujah. And then in Exodus 17 verse 15, we see Moses also built an altar. Hallelujah. Now, when Moses received the blueprint for the building of the tabernacle, ladies and gentlemen, among all the furniture that God instructed that should be placed in the tabernacle, there were two altars. Amen. At the altar, altar court or the tabernacle of the congregation, we have what we call the altar of burnt offering or altar of burnt sacrifice. Amen. And then in the inner court, we have the altar of incense or the altar of burnt incense. Are we together here? Now, the altar of, uh, of, of burnt offering was, uh, is a significant of sacrifices. Uh, it's also a typology of Christ dying on the cross. Now, the altar of incense is a typology of prayer. And God specifically instructed that the altar of incense should never run out. That every day in, day out, the incense must keep burning. Every day in, day out, they must make sure that the fire of the incense does not run out. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there are two types of altars. We have godly altars, and of course, we have demonic altars. Now, demonic altars authenticate satanic interferences, whereas godly altars make room for divine interferences. So, anytime you enter a place and you see that, I mean, social, all kinds of social vices or sin has taken over, then it tells you that certain demonic altars have been empowered in that place and the altars of God have been broken in that place. Any time that as a ministry you enter a place and you can see that there is abundance of sin and you can see that people are not repenting and that you can see that people are finding it difficult to come to church and you can see that you have done everything possible to evangelize and yet it looks like the more you evangelize, the 
the less people come to church, it will tell you that there are some demonic altars that are so strong that need to be broken. Am I talking to somebody here? And so in order for you to take dominion over that place and to take, I mean, total, to be in total command and authority over that place, it will go past the evangelism. It will go past, I mean, just inviting people to church. It will go past just strategies. It will go past just, I mean, decorating your church auditorium. Uh, you have to go deep down into the spirit and break down some altars. When Moses went to Egypt, am I talking to somebody here? When he went to Egypt, although he said to Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. Pharaoh did not obey. He had to deal, uh, he has to, I mean, send ten plagues. And the ten plagues dealt with the ten gods of Egypt. That means that he shattered the ten altars of Egypt and then Pharaoh said, uh, Moses, let my people go. I see some people here that after this place you step in your territory and any altar that is speaking, any altar that is silencing people from coming to Jesus, those altars will be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now there are three connotations of altars. The first connotation is the connotation of a built monument. The connotation of a built monument. So altars can be a built monument dedicated unto sacrifices, prayers, worship, for an attraction of a force, for engagement, for negotiation, among others. Hallelujah. So we see a typical example in Numbers 23. When Balaam instructed Balak and said that you have to erect seven altars. Hallelujah. And all the altars that the fathers built were monuments. Hallelujah. They built them out of stones. Amen. Number two, it is the connotation of a built temple. The connotation of a built temple. Now, when Solomon built the temple after he made the prayer, the Bible said that the glory of the Lord descended and rest was resident in that temple. So much that the priests could not stand on their feet. Hallelujah. So, if for instance, where we are now is an altar unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It is an altar unto the Lord. Why? It, is, it, is, it has been dedicated unto God. So, we don't come here for social functions. We come here because there is a place that has been dedicated unto God. Hallelujah. That is why you cannot enter a place that has been dedicated unto God and live the same. Hallelujah. And number three is the connotation of a person or an individual. The connotation of a person or an individual. Now, it is important for us to understand that one man was in his perfect state. There is a gentleman with God in the Garden of Eden. Nowhere was it stated that Adam built an altar. Why? Because man in his perfect state was an altar. So God can come down any time and have fellowship with man. Hallelujah. God could come at any time and have fellowship with man because man in his perfect state was an altar unto God. He had connection with God. He had communion with God. He had fellowship with God. He could talk to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But after the fall of man, that was when man entered the permissive will of God. And so, in order for the oppressions of God to be visible in the lives of men, there were certain things that were needed. And one of the things that were needed was altars. So anytime God visited the patriarchs, they erected an altar unto God. And God had respect on the altar because of the sacrifices. He had respect on the altar. Hallelujah. But church, the real deal is not the monument. But the real deal is you and I. Hallelujah. The real deal is not the monument. The real deal is you and I. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. The Bible emphasizes that our bodies is the temple of God. Our body is the temple of God. Hallelujah. This means that you could build temple. 
temples a monument, but if your life is not in right standing with God, it means nothing. Hallelujah. We can have a church, we can have a powerful auditorium, decorated. Amen. And if our lives are not pleasing to God, it doesn't move him. Because after Christ has come to die for you and I, ladies and gentlemen, the altar that God is interested in is you and I. That is why the church is you and I. We are the body of Christ. Am I talking to somebody here? So if God is not pleased with the state of your life, he will never be pleased with your activity. If God is not pleased with the state or quality of your life, he will never be pleased with the quality of your offering. That is what Saul didn't know. Hallelujah. The Bible says Samuel gave Saul an instruction. He said, go and kill, I mean, the Amalek and make sure that you wipe off everything. He went and he took some sheep and some goat and said that we want to offer sacrifice unto God. Samuel said, you have behaved foolishly. Hallelujah. He said you have behaved foolishly because obedience is better than sacrifice. God is more interested in the quality of your life than what you will offer unto him. And it is a time has come that as a people, as a church, as ministers, as servants, we must understand that God is more interested in the quality of our lives than the quality of our services. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Hallelujah. Amen. And so, any time that you find, you see a place where demons have taken over, ladies and gentlemen, it means that the altar of God has been broken. It happened in the days of Elijah. When Elijah was called at that time, God's people were double-minded as to whether to serve God or to serve Baal. Hallelujah. When we read 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 down to 10, the Bible tells us that Elijah called for a contest. And when he called for the contest, the prophet of Baal accepted the contest. And then they sacrificed the bullock on the altar. They called on Baal for several, I mean, hours, and Baal would not respond. And then when Elijah took over, he said, pour more water on their offering. They poured more water. Hallelujah. They poured water and over over and over again amen but before then the bible said he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken and when he repaired you see he knew that the secret was in the fact that the altar has been repaired so as long as the altar has been repaired it doesn't matter how wet oh am i talking to somebody here it doesn't matter how wet that sacrifice is. It doesn't matter how difficult that ground is. Fire will come down from heaven. And I see some people here that God is about to use to repair the broken altar. That it doesn't matter how difficult that place is. It doesn't matter how difficult that environment is. The fire of God will come down. I said the fire of God will come down. And so when Jesus was being crucified, they thought that was his end. But little did he know, did they know that just after he was crucified, he was the altar that God was waiting for. All this while, God was waiting for a man that can repair the broken altar that was broken in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, when they were all gathered together, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and there came glowing tongues as of fire. It sat upon each one of them, and they started speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Why? Anytime the altar is repaired, the fire will come down. I came to talk to somebody here. You are that altar. You are that altar. You are that altar. You are that altar. I don't care what is going on in your family. I don't care what you are, you are, you are noted for. I don't care what that vicinity is noted for. As long as you can stand up as one man to repair the broken altar of the Lord, the fire of God will come down. I said the fire of God will come down. I said the fire of God will come down. 
I said the fire of God will come down. I see some men here. I see some women here. We are saying in our family, there are all kinds of situations. In our family, all things are not working. But God is looking up unto you. And he said, will you not repair that broken altar? Will you not repair that broken altar in that vicinity? And I see the fire of God that is coming down. And I see that because of you, our thousands are coming to Jesus. Ten thousands are coming to Jesus. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this is the season and time where the fire of God will fall in the name of Jesus. And so all he needed to do was to repair the broken altar. There are some of us we are complaining and God is asking, have you not seen that the altar is broken? And some of us we are complaining, say, have you not seen check the church? You will see that the altar of the church is broken. And God is looking for a generation. And this is why we are here today. He's looking for a generation that will not compromise. He's looking for a generation whose heart are after the fire one more time. That the fire that started the early day church. Where is that fire? Where is that fire? That even persecution could not stop the fire. Where is that fire? That even when they, they brought that between them before the council. They said whether it is good to obey God or man. Judge for yourself. But as for us we cannot. But to speak the things we have seen. And the things we have heard. The fire was so strong on the inside of them that even death could not quench it. Peter looked at them and said, you want to crucify me? Crucify me upside down. I am not worthy to be crucified like my master. And one more time, God says we need a fire back. But before the fire will come, we need some men and women here who are ready to go back and say we are ready to pay every price to, to repair the broken altar. We will not be like those who bow to Baal. But we will be like them who stand and say, The Lord God Almighty, He alone is God. And I came here today to announce to some people here that you didn't come here by accident. God is calling you to go back and rebuild or repair that broken altar. And I tell you, no time fire will come. I say, you no know, time fire will come. I say, you know, time fire will come. We have heard of the revivals of old. And when we are looking for references, those are the references we still make. Can we have another revival? We have heard of mighty men of old. We mentioned the Smigwigos water. We mentioned the Catherine Commons. And we mentioned the Bessie the Horses. And then we talk about all these men. And what is happening in our generation? The fire must come back. And God is looking for you and I. And said, my people, if you are not going to compromise, if you are not going to go after money, if you are not going to defile yourself, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. This morning you are here. You want to lift up your hand. You are saying, Lord, I'm ready. I can see some altars are broken, yes. Oh yes, they are broken. That is why the enemy is having a nice time. Right now, just lift up your hand. You're going to talk to God right now. Oh, somebody lift up your voice. Somebody lift up your voice. I can hear you. Can you begin to talk to God? My life an altar for God. I say, Lord, my life is an altar. My life is an altar for you. My life is an altar for you. My life is an altar for you, Lord. Oh, somebody open your mouth and pray. Lift up your voice. My life is an altar. Oh, let me hear you pray, somebody. My 
My life is an altar for you. Koba da bo sada bahaya. Yeke baraha do si ko bahaya baha. Se makundi bahanda raba sekete. Koba yakuda bahadi bahasa. Se marote ke baya. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Pray that prayer of dedication. I dedicate my life unto you as your altar. Lift up your voice. Somebody pray. Makoya da bahaya. What is the use of being an apostle? When the broken altar cannot be repaired. What is the use of carrying a title? When we are in a vicinity. And people are dying in sin. Oh, lift up your voice. Koma di bahade bahaya. Ye koma ronda bahaya. What will be the use of having a powerful church? And yet people are dying in sin. People are committing fornication. There is no conviction when they come to church. They come to church and they go back the same. They come to church and they even fornicate in church. They come to church and they lie on the altar. Somebody lift up your voice. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Somebody let me hear you pray. Lift up your voice and pray. For as soon as Zion travel, she brought forth her children. Lift up your voice. The fire came down when they were gathered together at the upper room. Lift up your voice. It was in one place, but the effect was felt in several places. Oh, somebody, as you are praying here, it is affecting your community. It is affecting where God has placed you. It is affecting where God has planted you. Lift up your voice and pray. Iko bahada bahaya. Hey, kuma kapariata. Yepa karondi makataya. Ipe kaparonda katia baha. Hey, makaba yenda baha. Reba baba soma malia. Repa kuya bandola baba. Repe kaparada baba ya. Soma katunda maya. Rekete makuda baha ya. Repa kayonda bade. Sapa kayada baha. Zopa rikata. Zeke paranda baha ya. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Lift up your voice. Kayada bo sada baha. Koba kari baha da baha. Zetele be kapa. Koma di sota da baha. Makara do sada baha. Now begin to pray right now. Say, Lord, let every broken altar. Or say, like, say, Lord, let every broken altar in my place of assignment be repaired now. In the name of Jesus. So we declare, let the broken altars in our places of assignment be repaired now. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Kayado sada bahaya, ye parondi bahada baba ba, ze barato ko ba ya kapa, ze brenda le ba le ba 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 ka bando la baba, ye ko makunde le ba ka bando la baba ba sa, rata ko ya di bahada baba, ye pa para de ba de, ha ko ya da ba ha, sa bando le ba kapa, ka di sada ba ha, ya ka to la ba la ba ba ya. Lipando le bon sabran de le bekapa, ye pende le bele bekapa yaba, rota kapa yada bo sata, likonda la baba yanda le bebe, le bebe bebe bebe. Somebody declare, somebody declare, somebody declare, somebody declare, somebody pray. Lift up your voice, iko bahaya, iko bahaya, iko bahaya, iko bahaya, iko bahaya, leke parade. Makoya di mayaya, repa payondi bahaya, reke te ba ba ba, rata ko ba ba ya, reke te ba ba, roka te ba ya, makayo da ba, rata ko ba ya, rata ko ya, 
Matakoya, somebody pray. Lift up your voice. Ayeka Mabisa, Ayaka Rantoya, Rakatoya Baha, 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 Zandola Bakatoya Baha. Now we want to pray finally. You know when the fire fell, it, the Bible said it sat on each one of them. Hallelujah. It sat on each one of them. And wherever they went, they spread the fire. Because the fire was on them. And to this morning you are praying, you are saying, Lord, let the fire come upon me. Let it come upon me. That when I step in my place of an assignment, it will spread into homes, it will spread into families, it will spread into businesses. Lift up your voice, say, Lord, let that fire come upon me, come upon me, come upon me. Lift up your voice and pray. Kayada Bosada Baha, Yeketara Baha, Makolo Bosada Baha. Yakatola bala bahaya, sebrenda la bala baba baba, renda la baba baba, kabando la baba, rakeke ba yakuda baha, zeke brando la baka paya, yakadu sada baha, yaparando la baka pa, yapando la baka pa, yapando la baka pa, yakatoya bahaya, yakatola bala baha, yakele baka panda la baha, yakatala bala baba. Yada la bala baba, yada la bala baba, le paron da la baba, le padele beka pala baha. In the name of Jesus, it's either you are an author or you are an actor. When you stand as a man of God, as a servant of God, it's either you are an author or you are an actor. When you are an you are an author. People's life will be transformed. But when you are an actor, people will be entertained. Hallelujah. Tonight we are praying unto God one more time. We have a lot of actors. Amen. But when I read the scriptures, I see altars. That Paul, even in prison, that the king can say that you almost convinced me to be a Christian. Even in bones, anywhere he stood, he was not an actor. He was an altar. Uh, uh, an altar. Say, Lord, Lord, make me your altar of transformation. Say, make me your altar of transformation. Let it come to pass. Wherever I stand to execute my assignment. Oh God, let your power of transformation break forth let your power of conviction break forth in the name of Jesus lift up your voice this is our last prayer somebody pray somebody pray Yakola Bahada Baha Zebran de Lebekapaya Makoda Basada Bada Baha Zebran de Lebekapado Saya Makoya di Mahado Sata Keleba Ronda Lababaye Saduna Makatoya Baya Keria Parado Sada Baha Yepadoro Bosada Baha Ikola Basada Baha in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that our lives are never the same. Thank you, Lord, for setting us on fire. Thank you, Lord, for remolding us. Thank you for filling us up. Thank you, the Lord, the broken altars have been repaired. Thank you that your name alone will be exalted. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus.
Amen. Please give it out to Apostle Bama Samoa. And please, can we be seated? Please, what are we going to say to the man of God? God bless you so much, Apostle. We are revived and we believe we are not going to be the same. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we are continuing with uh, our welcome address. After that, we'll just share some few certificates and then we can have our tea break. There's some items at the back. If you want a tea, any sort of tea, we can get it for you. And you know, there's some drinks. We have some items for you just for some 15 minute break. And that 15 minute break, we are going to network, get to know somebody. You know, get to connect to somebody. If I tell you how I connected to Apostle Abraham somewhere, you know, I think it was over two years now. That is true, a prayer network in New York. So I connected with him through that online. And then from that, we build relationship. Amen. Amen. So we need to rebuild the altar. But you cannot build it alone. You need me, I need you. So we are here not only to pray, but to get to know each other, to build network so that we can rebuild the kingdom together. Amen. Amen. If you are happy, let me see your club. <laughs> so also, let's give it up for Apostle Nobet and the First Lady. Thank you for coming, Apostle. We have the man of God, Brother Eric, at the back. We have our daddy, um, Apostle Kufi. Please give it up for him. And the first lady, Mama Linda, she's at the back. We have um, Reverend Sally, who is a theologian, you know, my, 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 my colleague at the School of Theology. Thank you for coming, Reverend. <laughs> she's the first lady of an amazing ministry in Accra. You know, and we have also um, Reverend, Reverend Robert Jani Butri. Reverend Robert, give it up to Reverend Robert. And we have the Watchmen team. The Watchmen team, you know, the Watchmen team. Give it up to the Watchmen team. But I gave all, um, OPK, Pastor Daniel. You know, they've been with us for over four years now. They've been faithful. You know, we have the man of God, the minister of the gospel, Reverend Franklin. We have Alpha Tribe, and you know, all protocol observe. I really, really appreciate you all, but at this morning, it's at the back, Reverend Desmond, of the Glory Hub, the Glory Hub Ministries, you know. Um, Prophet Cash is there with our brother. Prophet Cash, thank you for coming. So at this moment, we are not going to be long because of our tea break, uh, but Nathaniel is at the back, the man of God, Brother Nathaniel. Um, Brother Reverend Enam. Please give it up for Reverend Enam. Our sister Benedicta, I sincerely appreciate you all because of time. We'll come back um, with, a, um, with a welcome address. So at this moment, I will invite our mom, Apostle Precious, to help us to distribute this certificate to some of the watchmen. We are just trying to honor them for being with us for over three years now. So this certificate is going to Reverend Ruby Asamwa. Th thank you for all you do. We have the next certificate to our brother, Emmanuel Kobisa. Please, can we have a representative? Sister Benedicta, can you, can you please come? This certificate is for Prophet Sarah Moose in the Bahamas. Sister, Sister Benedicta is representing her. The next certificate, um, can we have um, Apostle Lazarus to um, represent Reverend Felis Tete, one of our board members, the ICGC pastor in North London. <laughs> pastor Daniel, 
can you please represent um, our brother Castro? Castro. Um, this certificate is for the Bishop of the Ecumenical Assembly in Michigan, Bishop B.J. Lewis. Can we have a representative for him? Reverend Franklin, please, can you um, take this certificate on behalf of Bishop B.J. Lewis? Thank you so much, Mom Apostle Precious. At this moment, we will invite our dad, um, Reverend Akpo, to help us to give the remaining certificates. Please give it up for him. Um, this is for Pastor Daniel Nati for being with us for all these years, all his support, his prayers. Um, Prophet Cash, can you please um, take this on behalf of Apostle Prince Aban for being consistent with the watchmen? The next certificate is um, to this gentleman, Nathaniel Yeboah Sapon. If you are there, can we see you? <laughs> Mr. Ruby, can you please help us take this um, certificate um, on behalf of Dr. Shares Sands, um, Alpha Health Outreach, Florida? The next certificate is to Pastor Lazarus. Um, the next gentleman is our brother Gideon Aziz Awusaga. This is for Apostle Rahim in, in Texas for his contribution and his support towards the network. Um, please, can you take on behalf of Apostle Rahim, Apostle Lazarus? Thank you, Daddy, for your help. Um, can we invite Prophet King David? Um, please, can we have the gentleman... Um, Prophet King David, thank you for coming. We don't take you for granted. We want you to help us um, award this certificate for our executives. So the next person is um, Pastor Gabriel Sarah Mahiamvi. <laughs> Brother Joe, Brother Joe, can you take this certificate on behalf of um, our our brother Dr. Atta Debi in Washington? And this goes also to the amazing man of God, Reverend Franklin Abebio. Thank you for your mentorship, your advice, your coaching towards the network. This can we have a representative for um, Brittany, Brittany Rayford? Seven and Dita, can you represent? Brittany Rayford. This is for Brittany Rayford, one of our partners. The next certificate is to Pastor Jubilee. Pastor Jubilee, are you there? Thank you for your consistent, um, your guidance towards the network. Come welcome our mom, our amazing mom, phenomenal mom, Apostle Precious. This is for Apostle Precious Destiny. Thank you, mom, for all you do. Um, please, can we have the man of God, our brother Alvan, to receive the certificate on behalf of Evangelist John Cena. The next certificate is to Pastor Frazier in Mississippi. Thank you, Pastor, for being with us and all your support. Please, can we have a representative? Pastor Daniel. 
And we have Brother Gideon to take this certificate on behalf of Pastor QB Tolin in Georgia. Um, the next certificate is to Prophet um, Kinsley Opoku. Prophet Kinsley Opoku. And this is to the phenomenal man of God, Apostle Abraham Samuel. May the Lord keep you for us. This is for Prophet Aliando Baldwin. You know, this man of God has been with us for over five years. I think the first ministry we started, our virtual ministry, he's the one who started with us. He's in Philadelphia. Prophet Aliando Baldwin, we say thank you. The next certificate um, goes to our father, Apostle Kofi Ako. Thank you for your guidance and leadership. Um, we have another one here for Reverend Enam Ado. And can we have a representative for um, Prophetess Sylvia Castillo? Prophetess Sylvia Castillo, man of God, Apostle Lazarus. Okay. We have a representative coming. Okay. This is for Prophetess Sylvia Castillo. Thank you, Prophet. Thank you so much for um, helping us to um, do this. Also, we, let, let us um, give it up for Prophet Daniel Ado. So thank you all so much. At this moment, I know you are all exhausted. You need to get something to drink. So if you go to the back, um, if you want anything drinkable, tea, any drink of your choice, they will give it to you. So we, we, we are going for a 10-minute tea break, and we are going to be back. And our mom, Apostle Precious, will take us through leadership. Thank you all so much. Yes. 
Jesus, your soul of pleasure in your righteousness alone. No past my sin, my shame, my guilt, and you pulled your love. You looked beyond me, oh. Yes, you have looked beyond me, oh. Hey, I'm the one God. You have shown me best. You have shown me mercy. I say I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. Thank you, Jesus. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You see, my slave and son, Christ. I said, this leave and set you face on me, your way to Oh, Father, see you. Yeah, yeah, to bless you, my Lord. Jesus, 
something on so I will have to hear your voices. Hallelujah! We thank the Lord for how far he has brought us. In fact, throughout the time, it has been amazing. From the first minister to the second minister, in fact, throughout everything we've done so far, we, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I know that before we live here, and in fact, living here, our lives won't be the same. And so without much ado, I would invite our Reverend Reverend Enam Ado to continue in prayers as we prepare ourselves for the minister of God. Oh, you can do a better one for Jesus. Can we please be on our feet? Hallelujah. I want to salute all the bishops, the apostles, the men of God here, all protocol of them. Let's give it up for our men of God. Every man of God here deserves some recognition. It is not easy being in the front line in ministry. So let's give it up for our men of God, our women of God, those that are standing for us. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to pray for the nation. Amen. Bible said in Proverbs chapter 14, the verse 34, that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It would be a good thing if everyone in this nation comes to the knowledge of Christ, but it will only take revival. Hallelujah. We are praying that the reviving power of God will hit the nations across the world, starting from the nation Ghana. That every leader in the nation Ghana and the nations around the world will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. That every power and every principality will come to subjection in the name of Jesus. That every power and every principality will be down in subjection to the glory of God. That at the name Jesus, every knee will bow. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. At the name Jesus, every knee must bow. Revival must hit the nations up. We command territorial spirits up. We command principalities up. We command powers up. 
come under the subjection of Jesus uh, and we pray in the name of Jesus uh, that let the revival of the old, uh, let the revival in the days of the apostles uh, reach uh, the nation can uh, in the name of Jesus uh, like Habakkuk prayed, uh, do in these times uh, what you did in the days of the apostles, uh, we command and we pray, uh, seeking uh, that the revival power of God uh, reach the nation can uh, reach the nations of the world uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, let every other religion up, let every other neighbor, let every other God be subject to the name of Jesus, let every other God be subject to the name of Jesus, we pray that bringing up into some testament of the God, bringing the God of the Philistines up, the God of the right now, and the God of the Lord, and the Philistines up, we command them right now, and the Philistines up, in the mighty name of Jesus, and we believe that Hallelujah. Amen. When you read the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 8, it says that when the, when the disciples of Jesus were scattered around that, Philip found himself in a city Samaria and because of the revival he brought to the city, everyone came to the saving knowledge of Jesus. We are praying up that let that revival up with the nation can up. Let every cosmic power, let every supporting power up be brought down up to the subjection of Jesus. Let the power of God be manifest up in the name of Jesus. Lift up the voice and just pray up. Let the power of God be manifest up. Let the power of God be that the king of glory will come in up. We are praying up that any power mm. that is standing at the king 
knowledge of Ghana, for the nations of Ghana, that is refusing that the nation Ghana to receive resources up, that will cause us to prosper. Let those spirits be cast out up, and we ask that the gate be opened up to success. Up. Let the gate of Ghana be opened to riches. Up. Let the gate of Ghana be opened to prosperity. Let the voice of the let every head be lifted up, and let every gate be lifted up. Let the Lord be glorified. 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 Let the Lord in the name of Jesus, as we bring the prayer to summarization, we pray instituting legally the name of Jesus. Let every other name be swallowed in the name of Jesus. We pray that let every leader confess Jesus. Let every policies that will come to the nation be the glory of God. Let every influence of the enemy that comes from outside be rejected. We pray and we open the doors of the nation up to prosperity. Up. We open the doors of the nation up to kingdom influences. Up. And we open the doors of the nation up to revival. Up. We close the doors of the nation up to poverty. We close the doors of the nation up to any inferior spirit. And in the name of Jesus, Jesus. that whoever has stood in to pray, let him that waters be watered. Whoever has stood in to pray, let him receive grace. We pray for ourselves. Let the prosperity also reach us. Let prosperity reach us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Somebody shout, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. They get to speak in the language of the spirit. Praying for the church, mm, yes. the leaders of the church. Mm. One thing that scared me in the Bible mm. is the book of First Kings 13. Mm. When the Lord sent a young prophet mm. to Judah, there was an already an old prophet in the town. Yes. But the Lord not sent that prophet. Mm. Oh. 
the young prophet was given an instruction from the Lord. But the enviness of the old prophet means let that guy and end his ministry. We are praying for discernment for the generation coming. Hey, Jesus. The young one, the Lord is lifting up in the church. May they be discerning enough to obey only God. They want to pray. Makula Kapatalika. The young man, we understand the of God. the old prophet said am I not also a prophet of God they have come before us 30 years in ministry 20 years in ministry but the baton has been handed to the next generation and some of them are envious to allow us carry it on we are praying that Lord strengthen the faith of the young ones in the church let them have discernment of spirit that they will understand their calling and their purpose hallelujah Amen. amen the book of Psalm 73 verse 1 to 3 surely God is good to Israel to those who are poor in heart but as for me my feet had almost slipped I had nearly lost my foothold verse 3 how and why for I envied the arrogance when I saw the prosperity of the wicked the church is losing her foothold when we saw the prosperity of the world, mm. we are losing our identity. Yes. We are losing as a church. Yes. But we have written a prayer. Father, restore the foothold of the church. Oh, yes. Let the strength of the church be restored. Yes, Amen. Lord. See, it is dangerous. When you are dangerous, you know that you are dangerous. You have a machine gun and a man chasing you with a stick and running away. The church is losing her foothold. Mm. Brethren, lift up prayer. Mm. Let the foothold of the church be restored. Mm. In the name of Jesus, lift up prayer. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus verse 4 says they have no struggle their bodies are healthy and strong they are free for common human bodies the church is referring to the world they have no struggles they have no struggle the therefore pride is their necklace they call themselves with violence and we are seeing them in the church today because we envy the prosperity of the wicked. So we are bringing it to the church to be like them. Hallelujah. Amen. I like the verse 17. It says, Till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destination. Mm. So they envy the world until we contact God or we consult God, you will never know the end of the world. 
We are calling the church back to God. The church must return to God. The church must return to God. Without that, no revival. Yes. The church must get back to Jesus. Yes. He is the author of our faith. Jesus. He is the builder of the church. Oh, yes. We cannot go behind him. Oh, yes. We are praying for every leader of the church. Mm. May the Anish touch the ground yes. and go back to God. Pray for them. We are praying for leaders of the church. And we will run back to God. there is a canker, a virus in the church. If you can pray, we are okay with you. We don't care when you are living immorally. If you can lead in song, you have a voice, you don't care. You have behave anyhow. But it must take the watchmen of this generation mm. to set up the place and say, no, yes. it can't continue. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bible said in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 10 to 16, therefore there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk, deception, especially those of the circumcision group. Sorry. They must be silenced because they are disrupting the whole household oh, yes. by teaching things that ought not to be teached. And that's for sake of this honest gain. Verse 12. Let me go to verse 13 down. This thing is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply so they will be sound in their faith. And I will pay no attention to Jewish myth or to merely human command of those who reject the truth. Verse 15 to the pure. All things are pure. But to those who are corrupted and disobedient, and not do not believe, sorry, nothing is pure. In fact, both their mind, their conscience are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their action, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit of doing anything good. They are in our midst. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. They are in our midst. Men full of immorality. They are leading the church and they bring a lot of teaching that, that, that suit their character. The whole house is misled. But can we stay with our sword in our hand while the city of God is being attacked? Never. We don't care how you bring the tithes. We only count the money. Whether you are a prostitute or you sleep with someone's husband or you stole it, we don't care. That's how far the church has been corrupted. And Christ said, You brood of vipers, you pay tight on the little things you earn, but you are forsaken the weightier matters of the law. Faithfulness, justice, purity, holiness. We've thrown them away to the dogs, but we are lifting up prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The beauty of the church will be restored. The beauty of the church will be restored. I begin to declare simple prayer. The beauty of the church will be restored. 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 Father, it's not how many words we have spoken. Those who hear us, 
We come before you, O Lord, for the sake of the church. The ones you shed your blood for, it can be wished. Sweet Holy Spirit, take over the church once again. Jesus. Let this gathering be a memorial in heaven. Jesus. That a young generation stood on their feet and they interceded for the church. Lord, take back the church into your bosom. Clear all the voodooism in the church. Let the identity of the church be restored. Bring us back to the place of prayer. Bring us back to the place of holiness, righteousness, purity, and perfection. Father, we have prayed in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Please, we can do it better. 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 Before the, man, the, before the woman of God comes, we would want to invite Minister Pagans as he ministers a short song before the minister takes over. Oh, hallelujah. Please, let's can let's sit down. Oh, amen. I want to see your right hand like this. Kindly put it on your heart. Don't ask the Lord what name fits you. Then he shall hear. If you know how to sing, let's do it. Oh, don't ask the Lord what name fits you. Then he said, yeah. Say, generation after generation keep praising you yet no some see love. Hallelujah. Then I ask the Lord oh, what's name fits you. What is Saria? What is Saria? Oh, oh, what is the law? What's your future? The Saria. Listen, Yeshua, I'm a Saria. This morning, Can you lift up your hands as you see what is on? Lion of Judah, Lion of Are you there? You reign, you reign, says I lost to you. Cabos, Cabos, you are my dream. Say, 
Amen. Please give it out to Minister Paul Grant. Um, please, um, with a standing ovation, let's welcome our mom, Apostle Precious. So, as our mom is coming, please, if you have this card, kindly fill it, and the ushers will come around for it. Thank you all so much. It will help us to connect with you. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Welcome. Hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord for a beautiful presence like this. Shall we bow down our heads? Father, we want to thank you for the continuation of our program. We are so grateful and we are asking you to come and sit in it. Give us teachable spirit, retentive memories, and excellent spirit. That at the end of the day, we will give you all the glory. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. The topic, I think, is about leadership. Leadership without the fear of God. And into nothing. The whole leadership we have in the society, in the church, in organizations have been brought down to nothing. So I'm going to talk about the fear of God, which leads us into a lot of successes as leaders. And our main character is going to be Abraham. Abraham was a pagan from a pagan home. And he never knew God. But when Abraham was called by God. He listened, he obeyed, he acted. And that is why today we are living in the blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. A lot of times the church has gotten into bad reputation just because of bad leadership in the churches. In 
in the churches, we have opportunity to select people into leaderships in the department of the church. But what do we do? We do it by flesh. In the church, flesh has taken over the spirits. Let's go to Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Can I have my reader read for me? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your, com your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Two, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Three, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Amen. Amen. The fear of God comes by obedience. But we have lost obedience in the church. We have lost obedience in the society. We have lost obedience in our national leadership. If you have the fear of God as a leader, Everything you do, you consult God. And you will never veer away from the things of God, which is listening to God, hearing from God, and acting on God's word. Abraham didn't know God. If Abraham were to be in today's uh, dispensation I don't think he would have moved because today the Holy Spirit is talking to us we won't listen we don't even listen we don't hear we don't hear at all God is always speaking God is always speaking but we don't we don't have time to listen to God we have left obedience. A lot of leaders in the Bible, their missions were cut short because of disobedience. Example is King Saul, a young prophet, Judge Samson. And we can go on and on and on. Because they didn't fear God. They disobeyed him. And obedience of God is just submission to the word of God. How much do we submit to God these days? The church is finding itself in a very wrong and rough place. Just because the leaders of the church are not doing what they are supposed to do and they preach one thing and do other. I am a called missionary. As a leader, you are supposed to work in your certificate. God called us and he gave each of us what we should come and do. Like somebody said before me, because you think you are called as a teacher and the teacher or being a teacher is not paying, you now brand yourself a prophet. So there are prophets all over the place and now even the children of God cannot identify the real prophets. When somebody tells you there are no prophets, it's a lie. We still have dynamic prophets. Very, very dynamic prophets. Very, very dynamic teachers. Very, very dynamic evangelists. We have fivefold ministry. Instead of all the fivefold to be working in one church, we are working in other people's certificates, men and women of God. We are 
are working in somebody's certificate. If my brother here is called a prophet because his ministry has become bigger because he's a prophet, everybody says, I'm a prophet. You break your leadership from when you deviated from being your calling. So the leadership broken down is not when you even started, but before you started, you have broken it down. If we have a pastor in the church, we have a prophet in the church, we have a teacher in the church, we have an apostle in the church, and we have an evangelist in the church, which are the major five-fold ministries. We are all supposed to be in the same church to work hand in hand to the success of the growth of the church. But what do we do? They go into the, themselves and they want to follow what they've not called them to do. That is why you are struggling in ministry. Any child of God or servant of God who will not listen to God and do according to his will will suffer. When you see them struggling, that is when you see them going for all this babalao, juju, oil, this, that, this, that. Nobody says oils are not good. But what kind of oil is that? Oil mixed with people's blood. Oil mixed with urine. Oil mixed with all kinds of things. No. And total submission. The church has failed us. The church has failed the people. The church has failed the congregants. 